Welcome back to Mortgage Sense. In this video, we're taking a deeper look into Steve's mortgage situation. This clip is part two of when to use a subprime mortgage. So a quick recap here from part one. Steve is in his first year of business. Things are going great and now he's looking at purchasing a house. He was told by a prime lender he wouldn't be approved until he could provide two full years of business tax returns. So now Steve has the option of waiting for two years or going through a subprime lender. I'm going to show you the cost difference between these two options, as well as a tax saving technique to even the cost. Then I'll briefly discuss a couple more strategies that would help our friend here. Please keep in mind everyone's scenario is different and each person's scenario will, will result in a different cost. What might make sense for Steve doesn't mean it will make sense for everyone, so be sure to crunch your actual numbers with a mortgage broker or possibly your accountant. So let's get started. In Steve's scenario, we're going to use some simple round numbers. We'll say that Steve is purchasing a house of $500,000 and he has a down payment of $100,000, which equals 20%. When using a subprime mortgage product, the minimum allowable down payment is 20% because subprime mortgages are not eligible for high ratio mortgage insurance. So with this $100,000 down payment, Steve is then requesting a mortgage of $400,000. A quick rule of thumb. When it comes to Canada stress test rules, these rules restrict a person's borrowing ability to approximately five times their annual salary if they have little to no monthly debt payments. So if we look at that $400,000 request divided by five, Steve will need to be making roughly $80,000 a year to afford this mortgage. Here's where we notice the key difference. When a subprime lender looks at Steve's business for self income, they rely on his taxable income figure to calculate the mortgage amount that they are willing to lend. Which means if Steve's company earns $90,000 in business revenues, he needs to claim $80,000 in taxable income to qualify for a $400,000 mortgage. So now Steve is limited to expensing no more than $10,000 in his business or else he runs the risk of his income coming in too low. So let's calculate Steve's personal income tax on $80,000. According to our fancy income tax calculator from Nuevo.com, Steve will be paying approximately $19,000 in income tax annually for two years before he is eligible for financing. Please keep in mind we're doing a simple calculation for the sake of ease. There are exceptions to this rule, some of which we will discuss later on, but for now, please take this as it is. Now let's take a look at how Steve's scenario could be different when using a subprime lender's stated income mortgage. Remember we said that Steve's business was projected to make $90,000 in revenues this year. When using our stated income mortgage product, we use a simple worksheet to figure out the amount of usable income Steve has to service his mortgage. In Steve's case, it would look something like this. $90,000 in business revenues, $5,000 in auto expenses, $5,000 in tools expenses, $45,000 towards Steve's personal salary expense, leaving him with a taxable business income of $35,000. When using our worksheet, we'll combine the salary that Steve pays himself and his business's taxable income to generate the new stated income figure used to service the mortgage. In this case, $45,000 in salary plus $35,000 in business income equals the $80,000 required. So Steve's new personal income tax would, would be around $9,000 and his business income tax would be approximately $3,900. If we combine the two, Steve's total tax bill for the year will be approximately $12,900, which is roughly $6,100 less than our prime lending scenario. So now I've lost you. So now that we know some different tax implications, let's look at the costs of financing. Through a prime lender, Steve may get a rate of 2.9%, which would equal a monthly mortgage payment of $1,665. Through a subprime lender, Steve may be offered a mortgage rate of 4% and be charged an additional 1% lender fee on top of that. Yes, you heard right. Subprime lenders typically charge a 1% fee on the mortgage amount. Now this fee can either be added to the funds or paid up front. All right. So a $400,000 mortgage at a rate of 4% has a monthly mortgage payment of $1,905. The difference between the two monthly payments is $245. So let's crunch these numbers. 
If we take a $245 difference, multiply it by 12 months, the annual difference is $2,940. Now let's add that 1% lender fee of $4,000 and we're looking at a cost difference of approximately $7,000. But what if Steve took advantage of our tax saving strategy? Steve would have saved himself $6,100 in yearly income taxes. So, if we look at Steve's financial picture as a whole, the difference between the two options would only cost $900 rather than $7,000, and he would be able to purchase the home right away. My hope for showing you this calculation is that it gets you thinking about your finances as a whole. Most people are shocked when they hear a mortgage rate is at 4% or that there's a lender fee of 1% and immediately shut down without really exploring how these products allow them to take advantage of other money saving techniques. It's also worth noting that subprime lenders don't expect their clients to stay in the subprime space. Their lending service is used as a bridge to transition their clients into the prime lending space once their business or credit has been established. A couple things we didn't discuss in this clip are contributions to personal retirement savings plans. If Steve had made contributions throughout the year, this would effectively lower his taxable income without hindering his qualifying amount. Also, there are several prime lenders with mortgage programs that allow our self-employed individuals to gross up their taxable income by 15%, meaning Steve would only be required to show $70,000 of taxable income instead of the $80,000. I hope you found this series informative. If you are a business owner looking to purchase a property in the future, I suggest working with a mortgage broker and an accountant to create the best financial plan for you. If you have any questions regarding financing options available, please shoot me a message or give me a call. Thanks for watching. Cheers.